diagnostic type 1 clinic. It means someone who is both type 1 for 60 or 70 years coming to your clinic and saying that I was type 1 before, I mean since last 60 years and 70 years. It is a geriatric type 1 clinic and that was not there in our country and that's the reason why I was interested that we should do something to improve the care for these type 1 and they should also live their normal life for that they should have. So how India does compare? India is actually comparing like this. We are somewhere like Sudan. Sudan and India, there is no difference. I mean, a, a country which is completely not developed at all, we are in the same position. We also have, so you don't give anything to your type 1 diabetes, they will survive for 15 years. I tell you, I have done my data of 1998, I am seeing and I am seeing, I have published that paper also, that more than 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, when they exactly develop the complication. So they start getting complication after 10 years. Recommendation is after five years, you should start microvascular complication to screen. And then after 15 years, suddenly they start increasing. And after 20 years, it is too much. And 25 years, you will not find them. They are there in your clinic itself or not. So you will find very, very clearly that these people start developing complication. And that's the reason you will not find them after 20 and 25 years. And this is the reason a pediatrician cannot be an intensive care diabetologist because in his lifetime, he never sees a type 1 dying of any complication. He had seen a pediatrician as a person of an 8-year or a 6-year-old child. He will start writing any insulin to that child, them, whatever, HB1C may remain 10, 11, 15, no matter, child is going to survive for another 10, 15 years. Till that he develops complication, he will be an adult and he will be going to some adult physician clinic, adult endocrinologist clinic or some nephrologist clinic and he will die there. So a type 1 specialist, you know, I was fighting when I, I was the only one who was an adult physician elected in an international society of pediatric adolescent diabetes as an advisory council member. And they asked that why you adult physician are here because we divided from International Diabetic Federation because you people are treating only type 2 and we are the one who has to take care of type 1. Why you are here? I told them that you never treat people intensively. We are the one who sees the people dying in our clinic and that's the reason we should be here to take care of this. So I mean, this is the real status what we have. Why India does look like this? No care. Some of the patients may die in a rural area, maybe delayed diagnosis. Again, to teach pediatrician, very difficult. I have done one meeting only with IAP, Ahmedabad, dedicated meeting only for type 1. And they told me very clearly, Ki, sir, we see only one patient in a year. Why I should learn so much about type 1? One patient, I know basic management of DK. I will call some diabetologist, some friend, some endocrinologist. He will guide me for two, three days. I will make my 25,000 money and then I will send the patient to him. And I don't want to learn more about all these things because every day to do all these things is not possible for me to do all these things for this. So this may be one of the reasons. This is what most probably premix insulin. Absolutely criminal activity if we are writing premix. Forget about unethical. I am putting the word criminal activity of writing premix insulin to type 1. And that's the reason I am taking this talk. It's not to write. If you are writing, it's like that. Some of them may say that because patient had come to me, I should write. So then I asked my physician colleague, do you prescribe someone who comes to you with a patient of a lymphoma? A cancer patient, will you write? You say, no, no, I don't know anything about the cancer. Like JJ was talking, this is, I am not nephrologist. So you immediately say, no, no, this is not my cup of tea. So then think of that, this is not your cup of tea also. If you can't write basal bolus, if you can't convince your patient for basal bolus, it's not your cup of tea, forget this patient and send to the patient at right point. Insulin is tips and self-management. If you do only this much, from 28 years, you can increase the life of this child at, at least 54 years. So just by giving basal bolus, managing and checking the sugar four times a day, checking and giving every time insulin carb ratio and correction dose will survive the child this much. Advanced therapy will definitely another five, six, ten years more. But if you do only this much, patient will survive. Or if not this much, at least at this point of time, don't treat the patient. That will also give him good survival. So no need to treat the patient also. So glucose expense is not just A1C. 
This is very important statement, and this is done by DC City Chairman. What he's saying, intensive treatment is not just more insulin. So what we do is, you know, some of the time a patient comes with an uncontrolled sugar, doctor just tries to increase one or two unit here or there, and just tell the patient to go away. You just think that why patient had come to you. A child with family member, five person have come to you, sitting for two hours in a waiting period, and you are, they just show you report of HB1C and few reports of self-monitoring of blood glucose level, and we just tell that you increase the dose here or there. That's not the answer. I mean, it requires half a day education for this patient to get improvement. It's not just a simple five-minute consultation, and that is not required for that patient. So please don't increase one or two units. With 10 units, 10 HB1C also have a lot of hypoglycemia. And with 8 HB1C, there may not be no hypoglycemia. So how you educate, that is more important. Why the advanced therapy is required? If you do all these patients, a continuous glucose monitoring. One of your type 1 diabetic patients, you will find other day he's hyperglycemia, other day he's getting hypoglycemia also early in the morning. Sometimes a hypo with hyper, there is a dawn phenomena. Sometimes they have somog effect. So the same patient for a four days may have a four different continuous glucose monitoring profile. And that had changed the way we were treating diabetes. And that's the reason we need more frequent monitoring. There is a data to support that if you monitor more and you give more, the more bolus, probably they will have better control of diabetes. Where the CGM had come in the picture in 25 years later, the same DCCT trial, similar type of patient, could achieve a better control of diabetes. And you can see the risk of hypo had decreased from 60 to 20. Even in 2008, the CGM was not great. It was three days metronic CGM. And if you put two days CGM with like Libre, probably you can reduce the risk of hypoglycemia for the life. CGM alone is not enough also. Again, it is 30%. But even if today, for our uh, nationally, if we can do something for a continuous glucose monitoring, and when uh, now, you know, I'm part of the government of India, health department had put me uh, in a diabetes task force and it uh, dedicated as a tech, uh, uh, person for diabetes task force for taking care of type 1 and type 2, making guidelines and prevention. And probably I'm the only one who is in private practice who is in this task force. And what we talk for type 1 diabetes, they had put only two times sugar checking. And I told no, minimum is CGM requirement. Forget whether we are going or not. If you are not doing, that's a different thing. But CGM is minimum requirement for a type 1 diabetic patient. And this is what the data shows, that even if somebody is on multiple daily insulin injection and a blood glucose monitoring, which is four times to five times, is still the time in drains out of 100 times. It is be only less than 45% of the time a person's sugar will remain under good control. So this is what the data is showing. And if you can afford, this is something advanced hybrid closed loop system, you can achieve more than 75 to 80 percent of the this. So utility of continuous glucose monitoring, I told you the same data again after eight years with advanced hybrid closed loop system. No, it was not 780s, it was 670. And even that had shown zero hypoglycemia. So you can achieve a less than seven zero hypoglycemia in type 1 diabetic patient. Some of these type 1 diabetic patients to whom we had put, like this type of continuous glucose monitoring sometimes come. And why doctors get frustrated? You know, even if you put the patient on CGM, the doctors come and he says that what to do now, this patient. One day his fasting sugar is around 250 and other day he's developing 70. So, you know, the same patient in 14 days, one day is 250 and other day is 70. What to do with basal insulin? I don't know. This is the same. Post breakfast, one day it is touching 350, other day it is only touching 160. Same thing is happening post dinner also and one day post dinner is hypoglycemia also. So it's so difficult. So every day, more than 10 times in a day, he has to adjust his dose. 10 times he has to continuously monitor his sugar and continuously he has to up titrate, down titrate, taking the insulin and that education requires almost half a day. Multiple times as education is a continuous process. But if you put these patients on a pump therapy like this, these patients can be have flat continuous glucose monitoring at present American Diabetic Association as we talk for type 2 diabetes every time we show ADA guideline but we don't talk any time when it comes type 1 diabetes we don't talk about what international guideline is saying and what they are saying what is to be done automated insulin delivery A evidence is A in 2020 they have written before four years 
so that is what whenever we talk of any type 2 diabetes we start talking about the american guidelines this is what the spad guidelines in 2014 i was the part of it and now continuously whatever the pediatric diabetes uh, internationally guideline which is there we are there in the part of it but there is lot of disparity in quality of health care and i always say that this disparity is so much so the less resource people they get and their need is more as far as education is concerned as far as medicine is concerned as far as glucose monitoring device is concerned pump is there but they get less and less while those who are highly affording the resource provided to them is much more i mean someone i i have few patients who had gone to mayo clinic who had gone to uk to get the pump before 20 years when we had put here the first pump in 2004 before that even two two of my known patients had gone to out of country to get the insulin pump also so you know those who have high resource more resource that's the disparity in our country and it is all over the world it's not like that we are only having the disparity and some of you who have also realize in your clinical practice too that some of people who need more actually we are giving them much more or less but at few statistics which we can't ignore we cannot say that we are going to have change immediately maybe the pump therapy maybe in future but as per then i have to say all my patient the type 1 diabetes it means minimum four injection we give four five six seven as many as required diet exercise hormonal all these things keep on changing their sugar uh, reports our role begins as a healthcare professional we have to continue as a friend for patients we are coach we are not the player so i tell you we can't understand also type 1 one more problem with the type 1 is the family is taking care of it so you know the who is taking decision the father and mother i don't say they don't have emotion for that but the who is taking care of that who is deciding but he is not one who is having type 1 diabetes the similarly many of us we don't have type 1 and we don't understand what exactly type 1 unless you mix up with them unless you talk to them more you will not understand what type 1 but we are like a coach and he is the player he has to play the game but we can't ch change at present multiple times monitoring if they can't afford continuous glucose monitoring but with these things we can't ignore and we can't say that these statistics will not change with this i thank i thank all the organization which are supporting me and every child with type 1 diabetes deserves to thrive in their life that is what my wish is with this thank you thank you very much once again thank